Yo, still bills. What's the deal, man? Yo, peep game, man. Um, I'm gonna do a couple of videos today about Anthony Joshua, man, and um, uh, his past, his comments that he said over this past weekend on the IFL TV interview. But before we get to, before we get to, just the, the main thing is this. A lot of people are feeling some type of way about him saying that he grew up being influenced by the hustlers of the, the, you know, the big Meeches and the Larry Hoovers and, you know, the gangsters of yesterday. And they, you know, a lot of people feel it was corny and cringeworthy and just, you know, oh man, he ain't, he ain't even from America. He ain't about that. Now, granted, the UK is nothing like America. I don't think no country in in Europe, you know, in that particular area of Europe is is, 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 is like that. I don't, I'm, you know, when you get into like other, you know, like the Ukraine and Russia and, 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 and um, you know, Yugoslavia and just some real grimy and gritty parts of Europe, I, I, that's a different story, but I think um I think Albania actually may be somewhat close to the UK. I'm not too sure. So there are most definitely pockets within the European that that con you know the European continent that you know places get wild at. The UK isn't necessarily one of them of that magnitude, but that doesn't mean it don't get wild out there. You dig? Anytime you you living in projects, and that's so allegedly where Joshua is from, the projects. That's wild living. Is this as wild as chaotic as you know the projects over here in North and Central in North America? I know, but that don't mean shit don't wild out. Like Omaha isn't as wild as bigger cities because it's such a smaller and condensed population, especially when you're dealing with the more ethnic communities. You know the black communities and brown communities up here. The you know the brown you know the black community is the wildest bunch up here in North Omaha. And in the little pocket of the projects we got over there on the south side. But it, you know, we're such a small community that our numbers aren't in comparison to bigger cities because our community is, is so small. Now, I, I just, it just, it, you know, some places are just wilder than other places, man, but that don't mean that place ain't wild. It's, it's reasons to that. So I'm not about to just sit here and say, oh man, don't shit go like, you know, don't shit go down in the UK. I'd be lying. But I'd be also be lying if I said it was wilder, you know, wilder than like, you know, any part of America. Like, nah, sir. <laughs> nah, homie. But nonetheless, he came up in an environment where criminality is prevalent. It's, it's prevalent, man. Why is this so cringeworthy that he's saying he's looking up to the cats that he's looked up to, man? We got to remember, man, Um, everybody in here, uh, big game, think about all of these rap stars who have Italian names. You, you dig me? Think about that. Think about how many times the, you know, especially in the 90s when, when you know, when mob movies was really, was really skyrocketing think about how many motherfuckers was really on that italiano mob ball shit childish gambino even today the gambino even though he you know his content isn't his content isn't nearly what it is with a lot of like what jay was in the 90s and you know g rap and Nas and like niggas was talking that dope shit his content is a lot more conscious than theirs but just the name in itself Jay-Z on his Reasonable Doubt album is in like a zoot suit, you know, like looking real my bosses, bosses. You know how many of these niggas the reference La Cosa Nostra? You dig? Like, um, 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 more money, more murder, more money, more murder, more homicide by AZ. That has an attack, like the, the, you know, the production in that, um, the production on that track has a real Italiano type of nuance to it. Like the minute you hear that, the minute you hear that beat drop, you are it puts you in a it puts you in a mind like a it puts you in an Italiano type state you know state of mind. 
So even being up here, the gangsters in the street up here were influenced by the Lucky Lucianos, who wasn't even from America. They were from Sicily. You gotta remember, man, a lot of the bosses who became bosses in, you know, well into like the 40s and the 50s and the 60s and shit, they wasn't from New York. Them niggas was fresh off the boat from Sicily. So they wasn't even from America. They wasn't even from America. You don't start seeing bosses until the 60s and the 70s and the 80s. When you see motherfucking John Gotti come into prominence. John Gotti, I think he's from Brooklyn. He's not from, he's not from Italy. He's not from Sicily. So why is that acceptable? We're look about how many people have these, you know, uh, 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 these rappers reference their names after the likes of Pablo Escobar. Escobar is not from North America. Escobar, even when you talk about motherfucking uh, uh, um, El Chapo, you don't think these niggas look up and hold, I, I look up to El Chapo. I do. I do. What that man did, I mean, now, granted, I, I can never condone... I'm in a bit of a gray area when it comes to this shit, man, because it's like, all right, man, if you involve yourself in a game, you know what comes with that. So if you hustling and you fuck up a pack, you fucking up choke, niggas is coming to get at you, but you took that risk. You knew what it was that you, you can't, I don't give a fuck what nobody say, man, you cannot separate the streets from politics. You can't separate the streets from culture. You just can't. The Godfather of Harlem, those is based on true events, man. Bumpy Johnson in real life had a relationship with Malcolm X. A lot of people who become prominent in black society, like the, you know, they become beacons of hope, they become voices, they become politically astute politicians just in general, they become community activists. You gotta look at where it is that they come from, man. Kwame Torre was a motherfucking, he was, he was gang, he was a gangster in New York when he came up here from Trinidad. <laughs> Malcolm X was sliding white broads and hitting licks. He did, he did a damn near dime in prison. Motherfucking the Black Panthers, dog. You gotta look at you know people. This is what I mean. You know niggas don't read. They just see people in the state that they get in. The, they get introduced to people in the state that they're in, and they completely neglect their past. Man, Huey P. Newton was hustling. Go read Revolutionary Suicide. And he talks about shortchanging the cashiers at the store so he can come up. He was a wild dude. H. Rat Brown. These were wild dudes in their past. Khalid Muhammad. These were wild dudes in their past. And you still have to have that tie to the street. Why? Because the street is supposed to be the army for the black community. That's supposed to be our military base. So you can't get away from the streets, man. Bumpy Johnson, you know, he did some wild shit in the street. Now, granted, he, you know, the, the you know, what was illegal back in the day, it wasn't as it wasn't as harmful and toxic to black America as what's, you know, illegal today. They wasn't hustling like that. You know, they had the numbers racking and shit popping like that back in the day. It was prohibition with, you know, with the alcohol and shit. It wasn't, a, it wasn't something as problematic as selling dope. It wasn't. But they were still steeped in a world of criminality. So if you're, you know, if you you know, if you're on the street, you hustling, you doing your thing, you know, it's fucked up. But, you know, in, in America... Society has put a black cloud over the black community. So it's like, what other alternatives do you have? You have to be a really strong minded individual to find an alternate route to doing the wild shit that we are exposed to. You have to be. And sometimes you can have that or that strong mind, but it's just circumstances, man. I know people who are just they're so entrenched in the street, just genetically, their entire lineage belongs to a certain hood up here. It's like, how do you escape that? So we can't, you can't separate the streets from, like the streets is always gonna have an effect on something. I don't care if it's something in your everyday life. Even in hip hop, man, hip hop is a fucking street, it's street culture. That shit didn't get, that shit didn't get cultivated in an affluent neighborhood. That came from very problematic circumstances. <laughs> so there's nothing wrong with, be, I mean, you know, you don't wanna, you, you don't wanna be, you don't want to be influenced to a point where it's like, all right, bro, like, I'm about to go out here and get this money by any means necessary. No, you don't want to be that out the window with it. But it is like, hey, yo, man, homeboy took a risk. Homeboy took a risk to go get it, and he got it. 
All you see is the money. You don't, nobody talk about the bodies that get piled up in the process of you getting to it. Nobody talks about that. Nobody talks about that. So from that paradigm, nah, I can't get behind that. But a nigga who's willing to take a risk and risk it all. Hey, man, like. And I can't even respect if you're going to get out here and catch an M. If it's a nigga in the game, if it's a nigga that's problematic in the game. And right, when you look at Freeway Ricky Ross. Freeway Ricky Ross doesn't have a reputation of gunning niggas down. Even though I'm pretty sure he didn't clip some niggas along the way. We're never going to know about him. But you can't be... You can't get involved in that particular uh, uh, um, business and not be willing to execute. Nicky Barnes said that himself. You got to be willing to terminate. You have to. You got to be willing to terminate some shit if you get involved in this business. But, you know, Rick Ross's big thing was, man, if you if you fucked over on the pack, fuck me over on the pack, I'm going to just cut you off. Bodies bring unnecessary attention. Yeah. So I can respect somebody who's living by a certain code, but still out here doing, you know, wilding out. I can respect that. Even, if, you know, if you're a nigga who's just entirely too reckless, like, you got to get got. I can respect that. Some niggas do got to get got. I'm sorry. Some niggas do. Some niggas got to get got. Some niggas just got to go. It's, you know, it's a, it's a sad reality, but... It just is what it is, man. So we can't separate the streets from anything, man. The streets is always going to have a, some sort of a say-so in what goes on in regular, in regular everyday society. It's too much of an alluring world for it not to. It's too alluring. It's the reason why white America is trying to get out here and hustle and gang bang and, 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 and formulate their own conglomerates. Oh, you know, man, it's my hood over here, even though we in suburban America with privileged white kids it's a reason for that so i took no i took no issues with what what anthony joshua said i i, I don't i didn't cringe at it at all i did like that shit didn't make me feel like uh dude you ain't about that. it didn't make me feel no type of way you can't talk that bullshit of oh man he ain't even from here when half of the gangsters from here don't even look up to the gangsters from here You gotta look at all the how chaotic Colombia and Mexico and shit like that was, man. Like those were those those were the epicenters of you know drug trafficking in the 70s and in the 80s, especially Colombia. Mexico took the shit over. Now it's Mexico. Well, pa not Pablo Escobar, but with um, what goddamn um, El Chapo did go walk into a, you know walk into a bank and pay off everybody's debt shit like that is some Robin Hood shit and to my knowledge because I used to work with a girl from the shot and he had big you know what the fuck is all this shit in the street the Sinaloa cartel had a huge foothold in Chicago racket up there and what from what the people were saying from what I well shorty told me what the people were saying in the rack as it pertained to Pablo Escobar was he didn't get, he didn't get involved with like if you fucked up a pack I'm coming to get you I'm not about to eradicate your whole entire family and your whole bloodline I'm not doing that you fucked up you gonna answer for that that's some shit that I can respect that's to be respected you can't fuck the drug you can't fuck the hustles on the grassroots level but not say shit about big pharma and all these pharmaceutical companies you can't do it. That shit does not get into America without approval of the higher ups. It does not. So just on that aspect alone, it's like, all right, bro, like, you know, it is what it is. Sorry. I don't take issues with the hustlers, man. It's always been like that. Everybody wants to hold hip hop in a certain state that is just this, it's just this angelic being, and it's not. KRS want to tell you that. KRS wanted to. He was in the clubs talking when niggas was bigging up the, bigging up the hustle. LL Cool J bringing Fat Cat, not, not Fat Cat, but uh, 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 Supreme up on stage and shit like that. All the rappers from back in the day bringing up Supreme on stage and niggas shouting out Alpo and, and motherfucking Rich Porter and shit and all the hustlers from the street. Fat Cat. You can't get past because you know it's like yo man, you know these respectable dudes. These is official dudes. 
You want the respect of official niggas, real niggas. You want that, maybe not from a street standpoint, but you know, somebody that you see, you know what I get into. My presence alone is going to shake the room. And with my presence alone, me being able to come in a room and shake the entire room and have everybody fidgety, for him to walk up to me and, be, and, and embrace me, that says something about you. So everybody has some sort of affinity to the streets, whether you want to admit it or not. There is no getting past that, man. Niggas, got, niggas fuck with the streets. It, it, this is what it is. We, hey. Like, what's up with it? You did, like, everybody want to talk about, everybody talks about, about, like, how we talk in the streets. Everybody talks in that vernacular. You can't get away from the streets no matter how hard you try. You can't get away from it. There is no getting away from it. And people just got to acknowledge that shit. And what else comes with it? it not everything in the streets is bad business. Hip hop turned into something that was a, a, a brilliant mastermind. Just the how just you study hip hop, you study, you just you listen. Just everything about hip hop is just brilliant, man. Who hurt grabbing two turntables to you know prolong the breaks in that particular environment created a, a you know a, a created an element to where the b boys came to existence off of that aspect alone just prolonging the breaks on breakdowns of the records that's brilliance flash with the scratch him creating the scratch this shit is brilliance toasting this is brilliance we talking about man and that shit is all from the streets you can't get away from the streets you can't get away from it you can't you cannot get away from it. It be like that, man. So I take no issue with him saying that. I take no issue with him saying that, man. We niggas talk, niggas, niggas look up to the to the you know to the dope dealers and the hustlers, and they talk about it in their music. You don't think that music is just staying over here in America, do you? You cook, oh, surely you don't think that. Motherfuckers is trying to tour overseas and shit, man. Nipsey Hustle was touring in Japan. You don't think them Japanese folk know who Tookie is? Jamel Barnes, you don't know they, you don't think they know who them cats is? Through Nipsey Hussle, through a Snoop Dogg, all these blue rags that have made it, you know, that have made, became prominent across the corrupt, Daz, you know, the dog pound, you don't think they know? Hell yeah, they know. Hell yes, they know. And America in itself, niggas look, uh, bro, we can't get past that. We can't get past that. Niggas look up. Niggas hold Pablo, Griselda, Blanco. They hold those people in high esteem. They do. You can't get away from the streets. You can't. So him saying that shit, is, it's not cringeworthy to me. And most of the motherfuckers who hate on Anthony Joshua are Wilder supporters. Was it not cringeworthy when Deontay Wilder was talking about he wants to experience childbirth? Was it not cringeworthy with the, his multiple clips on YouTube with him bending over and throwing it in a circle? Is that, that's not cringeworthy to y'all? That's not cringeworthy? It ain't, even, not even him talking about catching a body. That was never cringeworthy to me. That was some, that's, that's kind of like some other shit. That's kind of dishonorable to me. Even though you're legally you know, in a position where you can do it and get away with it. It's like, why would you want to do that? This is sport at the end of the day. I don't want you to go home. I don't, I want you to go home with your wife and your kids. I don't want you to go at the next time your family see they got to identify the body. I don't want that. Most fighters don't want that. Most fighters who catch a body in the ring, they fuck, they're fucked up psychologically. They may not show it. They're able to perform still, but there's some, there's certain aspects that they can't revisit. Like Sergey Kovalev, he killed a dude in in Russia, and he can't. He just doesn't have the best performances when he goes out and fights in Russia. It's some sort of mental block that he just can't get over. That as menacing as a boxer as he was, he can't, he just can't shake that. So him saying he wanted to kill, clip a nigga was just kind of like some. 
you know, that's just kind of like some extra, you know, like, nah, that shit ain't cool. But don't talk about Anthony Joshua being cringeworthy for saying he looked up to the hustlers. But disregard Deontay Wilder throwing it in a circle. They talk about he wants to experience childbirth. You know how ha you know how women get pregnant through sex. <laughs> so what this dude is saying is he practically wants some dude to run his rod in him and squeeze off on him. And he cultivate that seed in his rectum and push that bitch. <laughs> hey, come on, man. Come on. This is ridiculous. Anthony Joshua was saying, I looked up to these cats. That means that, that what that's telling me is he's trying to rediscover that dog and just that grimy and grittiness that he had when he first came on the scene. That's all that said to me. Don't talk about he's not from America because most of you niggas look up to hustlers outside of the American border. North American border. Let me, let me specify on that. The North American border. Most of y'all look up to them. Most motherfuckers is looking up to Pablo. Most motherfuckers is looking up to uh, uh, El Chapo. Most motherfuckers is looking up to Griselda Blanco. And the more prevalent Colombian Me and Mexican cartel hustlers of the past. We can't get past that, bro. We, we can't get past that. We can't get past that. Motherfuckers is gonna reference Medellin. Motherfuckers is gonna reference Sinaloa. Motherfuckers is gonna reference Sicily. The streets is very alluring. It just is what it is. It is. People are drawn to the street. People are drawn to the street life. That's why these shows are so prevalent. That's why people like me can know about all the gangsters out east. And the gangsters out west. And the gangsters in the Midwest. Because the streets is an alluring lifestyle. So don't get mad at Anthony Joshua when he says, I was, I, I, I grew up looking up to these cats. I did as well. It is what it is. I didn't fill their shoes. I was always 10 steps ahead. I was around my niggas. But I'm the nigga that's, man, we ain't got to do this. I want to find a way to get us out of the situation without having to come to the extra shit so niggas ain't got to risk looking over their shoulder everywhere they go because we done crashed somebody. You're going to lose against going up against my battalion. I don't fuck with nobody say. I call my homies, hey, man, no, we got niggas is taking L's. When niggas take L's and burners come out, man, and here we go into the extras. No, let's look for a way out of this. I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. So let's look. That's me. That's me. I had love. It's a hustle for my blood. Now I'm not going to tell you. But every time you see him, he come out with the, you know, he got a new lack on them things. Hell yeah. That shit was lit. He looked up to that nigga. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. We was broke coming up. We wasn't piss poor, but we was broke just like any other family in North Omaha. But I couldn't see myself getting out here and selling a product that's destructive to my people and just on top of that i wasn't i don't know if i'm ready to deal with the ramifications if you get caught are you willing to sit down for this amount of time are you willing to have your freedom snatched from you that was never like nah i i, I, I can't do it i got homies whose mother was strung out i got relos who's who, you know who's strung out Nah, man, I couldn't be the I couldn't be, I couldn't be the Grim Reaper to sell you that poison. I couldn't be him. I could not be him. But I honestly, when you come from these environments, you respect the motherfuckers who's willing to take that risk. It's like, all right, man, they, if, if I don't if I don't if, if I don't hit them off, someone else gonna get them. So fuck it, let me get this bag off of them. It's not an admirable thing. It really isn't. But that's the environment. That's the environment. You got to adapt, man. You got to adapt. We come from depraved communities, man. So when that shit when that shit is presented to you, like where I grew up at, 30th and Lincoln Boulevard, North Omaha, man, right over right over right across the bridge. Going down California Street going up in the 90s was a crack arena. 
niggas was getting to it, man. You seeing niggas walking down the block itching off that shit. It's weird. When you're a kid, you don't know what's going on. When you're into you grow up, you're like, damn, niggas was getting it like that over there. So I'm saying, man, I have no issues with what he said because I was a nigga who looked up to cat. Hey, get that money, B. Ain't nothing wrong with what he said. Ain't nothing wrong with what he said at all. There's nothing wrong with what he said. He's no different from any other black man in America who is around from around the way and even still lives by certain codes and policies in his everyday life. Nah, he a snitch. You a snitch ass nigga. You a snitch. Even though technically snitching gets it gets the violent offenders off of the streets, so if you want to get technical, he did he did the community of justice. He killed so and so, yada yada yada. All right, cool. He got all the dope. All right, cool. They got a violent offender off of the street. But when you go by, when you live by certain laws, that's, you know, that's, that's, that's unacceptable. Especially when you a nigga rolling around doing in the same mud as this nigga. When you doing the same shit as him and you get, you just ain't as prevalent as he is. Mm -hmm. And to get that little bit of heat that you done got on you, off of you, you willing to throw somebody else up under the bus. Nah, homie, like that shit is dishonorable. That's some dishonorable bullshit. That's a dishonorable boy. But people live by, you know, it just is what it is. So don't talk that shit to me about Anthony Joshua being a cornball just because he's from, he's, from, he's from Britain and you niggas is from America. No. Especially when the people that you listen to when your music reference all the hustlers south across the border. I take no issue with what Anthony Joshua said, man. If that's what's gonna, if that's what it takes, if that's what it takes for you to tap back into that dog, you you reference all the gangsters from the past, so you can go and get them belts back and get back on your road to undisputed. You do that. Fuck what these niggas is talking about, because they Wilder fans more than likely, and they still ain't got an answer for that man bending over and throwing it in a circle. Dude was real life making it clap in the middle of the street, and niggas just disregard that. Niggas just disregard the fact that this man is saying he wants to experience childbirth. Like, what the fuck? But we gonna bang on Anthony Joshua for having the same thoughts as y'all just because he's not from here. What the fuck is wrong with y'all niggas? Niggas is ass backwards up about square two God. What the fuck is wrong with y'all niggas, man? You listen, man. Like I said, you can't get away from the streets. You can't get away from the streets. The streets is always gonna stamp you. You don't have to live your life 150% by the streets and all because the some shit. The, you gotta know when. All right, cool. Like, is the is the is the is the soil gonna fuck with this? That you gotta know when it's all right and acceptable to go and, and 